Welcome to my homestead, y'all. I'm your host, Jenny Veliki, also known as the Funky Farm Girl. I'm working to create a home with a little farm, a little faith, a lot of food, and a bit of funky. I'm learning all about growing and preserving our food supply, raising chickens and children, and becoming more self-sufficient while leaning hard on Jesus. And I want to take you along for the ride. So grab yourself a cup of something wonderful, and let's visit a while. Hey y'all, this is the Funky Farm Girl, and you're listening to episode 26, The Homestead Minimalist. I'm your host, Jenny Veliki. I'm so glad you could join me today. We start off every week with an update on our homestead, and so this week, I'd like to tell you about our feeder swap. This week, we are moving one of the chicken feeders from the great big run over to the smaller run where we've moved our black um, copper moran easter egg or mix chicks and so we're going to give them one of those feeders and then we're going to set up a new feeder in the big run we're actually going to use a timer deer feeder so that we can give them a specific amount of food at a specific time interval throughout the day and we're hoping that that cuts down a little bit on waste and makes feeding our chickens a little bit more automatic for us and hopefully it'll be a good fit for everybody but check out my instagram page and see what we're up to on the homestead this week so let's get into this week's episode on the homestead minimalist And yes, this is not a design show. We have not switched gears and gone in a different direction. Um, But minimalism isn't necessarily a design preference. It's, It's really an element of the lifestyle of homesteading because it is another way in which we are focused on being producers and not consumers. And people in general who are minimalists are people who are focused on consuming less they are into buying less and possessing less and having to manage less so that they can spend more time with people instead of things and so not everybody who homesteads is a minimalist but I want to highlight why I'm choosing to be minimalist and how I'm working towards it to get you thinking about your own relationship with stuff And so, where do we start every time? We always start with why. And this week, I have two why questions for you. And then three steps towards minimalism. So, let's get started. Our first why is, why be a minimalist? Why would we even bother at all? And it really boils down to, the less you have to maintain, the more you can concentrate on your homestead, your family your hobbies, the things that fill you up. If you spend all your time managing clutter and moving it around and pushing it from place to place and struggling around it in your house, you're not going to have as much time for learning a new homesteading skill or spending time with your kids after being outside in the garden or any of those types of things. It's just going to be much more difficult to do because you'll come in from doing all the things, managing the homestead outside, and then have to come inside and manage the clutter and the mess inside. And nobody wants to do that. And so let's really focus on why would we want more stuff to deal with when we could have Less things that give us more room. We, we need to clear out things that take up physical space to make room for us to learn things that we might need mental space for. Um, this makes me think of the vacation house that we stayed in when we were on our beach trip. Um, vacation houses tend to be one thing in common, 
really with all of them. And that is that they have all the basic things that you need. They're going to have beds. They're going to have a couch to sit on or comfy chair. They're going to have plates and cups and silverware and maybe even basic condiments and seasonings in the kitchen a coffee maker those types of things they may even have a few towels or sheets or things like that um, then they're going to have just enough to make it feel homey uh, they might have a few things on the wall to decorate they may have a throw over the back of the couch things like that but it's not overwhelming and it's not just stuff everywhere it's just enough to give you what you need and make you feel at home. And that's because they want to leave you free to relax and enjoy the destination of where you've gone to and the people that you've gone there with. And they don't want you to have to worry about all the stuff and managing it. Nobody wants to clean house on vacation. Nobody wants to shuffle around a bunch of things in the kitchen to be able to make dinner when they're on vacation. And so why are we requiring that of ourselves at home if we're people who have a lot of clutter? And so that really is the biggest reason why I am choosing to be more and more minimalist the second thing that you need to ask yourself when it comes to why is, why do you have the clutter in the first place? And we really need to get to the root of the issue. What is it that causes you to collect the things that you collect by the things that you buy? What is the deep down need that you're trying to fulfill by having all of these things in your home or around you? And if you can unlock that key, that is really, really essential in helping to change your mindset about the things in your house and to begin to see them properly as just things that aren't nearly as important as the people who live there with you. So for me, it was two things. Number one, I grew up with not a lot. Uh, I wouldn't say that we were in poverty, but there wasn't a lot of extra of anything. And so I think I picked up on that through the years as I was growing up. And so for me, having the stuff in my house and having options and things that I needed even before I needed them just made me feel safe and secure that I had what I needed no matter what happened. And so I didn't have to worry or stress but it was also way more than I would ever need or have a use for. Uh, and that kind of leads to the second why for me, why I had so much clutter. And that was that when I was growing up, we moved every year to two years. And before we moved, we would do a big house perch. We would get rid of all the extra or the things that we had outgrown or the things that were broken or not not being used on a regular basis and we would get rid of that stuff and we would take everything else with us to the new house and we did that every time we moved and we moved every year to two years and so naturally through my life I was regularly purging my belongings and it was just a natural thing that always happened and then I got married to someone who had always lived in the same house and had never done that before and we settled down and we weren't moving all the time and so I didn't have that natural trigger to help me purge and so the things began to accumulate and pile up instead of being purged and and weeded through on a regular basis so understanding why you want to get rid of the clutter why you want to be a minimalist and why you had the clutter in the first place really helps you to begin to take three action steps. And the first one is stopping the incoming flow of stuff. And how do you stop the incoming flow of stuff? You ask yourself why. <laughs> why do you need it? Why do you want it? Will I use this? Where will I put it? Ask yourself these questions before you buy something. Um, and then maybe take a fast from shopping. Maybe you do a no spin challenge and you say for the month of 
October, I'm not going to spend anything other than what we need for groceries. Um, maybe you say from Halloween until Black Friday, I won't buy anything other than food. Um, maybe you collect a certain thing like books or um, CDs or clothing and you take a fast from buying that specific thing until you reach a specific goal in your decluttering. Whatever it is that helps to motivate you to stop the flow of what's coming in. And again, if you don't understand why it's coming in, it doesn't matter how much you throw out, it's going to keep coming in and you're not ever going to address the root of the problem. So make sure that you get to both of those things. And knowing your why is going to change the way you shop. It just will because you understand where your brain is coming from and what motivates you to um, buy and collect things. So once you've stopped the flow from coming in, and I will say again, you're not going to turn it off completely, but you're going to slow it down quite a bit because there's always stuff we're going to need. There's always kids that need new clothes or need something specific for school or what have you but we can stop the never-ending river of what's coming in your house so number two second action step we can take is to build momentum with the jump start we need to start with the most visible part of your house when you walk in the door of your home whether it's through your front door, through the garage, through the mudroom, whatever it is. When you first walk into your home, how does it make you feel? And what are you first laying eyes on? Start there. Start with the shoes that are overflowing the basket on the front porch, like I have. Start with when you walk in the front door, the school area that's right across from the front door that you see as soon as you walk into my house. Those would be the areas that I would start in in my house. What does that area look like for you? And the reason we want to start with the most visible is that's going to make you proud. That's going to give you a sense of accomplishment every time you walk by that particular spot in your house. And if it's the first thing you see when you come in the door, you're going to see that spot an awful lot. And that is going to keep you moving forward. And that's what we need. You don't want to start with somewhere like your corner cupboard in your bathroom. (laughs) That holds stuff that you barely see once a year or so. You're not going to start with your box of memories from when your kids were babies. That's not the place to start. You need to start somewhere super easy and super visible. Um to build the momentum to keep going and I really recommend that you start with a big push block out a week to power through as much clutter as possible and I hear everybody say but 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 I'm on a schedule I have kids at home I have a homestead I have this I have that but I will remind you of our episode previous where we discuss going on vacation and why that was so important. If you can prioritize that and block out time for that, you can prioritize and block out time for this. It's all in the motivation. What motivates you? What's your why? That why will help you to make the difficult decisions to block out the time that you need to do this. And then make it easy on yourself. Before that time comes up, Get all the laundry done. Throw a couple meals in the freezer so that when it's time to eat, it's no-brainer stuff like throwing something in the crock pot in the morning or maybe you eat prepackaged foods that's easy to prepare for for just that week. Maybe you schedule a time to go out to eat to celebrate at the end or you eat lots of sandwiches that week. Definitely buy paper plates so that you're not having to do so much dishes and things like that. 
clean your house beforehand. Anything that you can do to make that road just as smooth and easy with no obstacles as you possibly can. And then power through and get as much decluttered as you can. Okay, so we're going to ask ourselves why. We're going to stop the flow. We're going to build momentum. And then we're going to choose a method. And we really need to have a game plan going into this. You may start with the most visible areas of your house and move to more and more less visible places like that cupboard in the bathroom in the corner that you only go in once or twice a year um you may decide that you need to do it by room and if you do it by room number one don't start in your kids room because they'll destroy it before the end of the week and you'll be depressed and and frustrated and you won't get anywhere Start with the easy rooms. Work through them quickly. And build momentum that way. And another way to do it is to declutter by category. Um, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo was a major book for me. And the KonMari Method in helping me get rid of a lot of things quickly. Um... It wasn't the primary way that I did my house, but that was what I used when I did my big push just to help me get as much out of my house as quickly as possible. And then from there, I went room by room and began to pare down and set up that room in the way I wanted it to be. And then to take out the things that didn't fit whatever the purpose of that room was. And So definitely starting by category helped me quite a lot. Um, I highly recommend that you start with your most non-emotional stuff first. Um, So ask yourself what triggers emotion for me. It's not going to be the same for everybody. But I can about guarantee you don't need to start with your kids baby pictures. You don't need to start with old yearbooks. You don't need to start with boxes of photos and mementos. Um, You don't need to start with maybe a spouse's closet that the two of you are no longer married and that's painful. Um, You don't need to start there. You need to start with your bathroom because there's there's very little in the bathroom that is emotional for most people and you can go through it pretty quickly and a lot of it's cut and dried this medicine is expired so i need to get rid of it um type of thing and so you can make a lot of really quick progress because they also tend to be smaller rooms and not have quite as much in it and being able to check off a room or two pretty easily um will be great momentum to move you forward so think about organizing either by visible to invisible, by room, by category. And know that this is not about a specific number. There is no manual that says you may only have four shirts and three pairs of pants. If if what makes you happy is 15 pairs of jeans and you love every one of those pairs of jeans and those jeans don't keep you from spending time with your family and those jeans aren't causing you any problems, then keep your jeans the point is to make room for the things you love the most whether it's your family your hobbies your passions whatever by getting rid of what doesn't matter and when you get rid of the things that don't matter then you have more room more headspace even to use on your family, your homestead, your animals, your hobbies. You have more ability to expand what you're doing to build your self-reliance even more um, by clearing out the stuff in your house and by making homesteading less stressful because you're not going to come in from weeding the garden all day to a house that's a mess because you only have what you need there and what you truly love and so it's not overwhelming to keep up with those things so um you can always go back to the emotional stuff after you have finished all the things before that all the things that are not emotional 
Um, and, and that's going to give you the momentum and the strength and, and it's going to hone your ability to know what to keep and what to give away so that you, you save those emotional things for last. And then it's really easy to, um, or much easier to go through those things and make better decisions because you've had practice with it. So are you a minimalist? Can you find ways to cut down on the things in your home so that you have more time for the people and things that are most important to you. Let me know at the Funky Farm Girl on Instagram and Facebook. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And if you decide to do a challenge like this and power through, I'd love to see some before and after after pictures. Just DM me on either Facebook or Instagram and let me see them. I am going to remind you again that I have a review challenge going on right now where I'm trying to collect 500 reviews for for iTunes. And I would love it if you could help me with that. In order to leave a review on iTunes, you need to go to the Apple Podcast app. Tap search in the lower right hand corner. Enter the Funky Farm Girl. Tap Reviews tab, and then tap Write a Review at the bottom of the screen. I'm really hoping you'll consider giving the Funky Farm Girl five stars and a great review. I want to hear what you want from this podcast. So please feel free to leave me some feedback and let me know how you're enjoying these podcast episodes of the Funky Farm Girl. Thanks so much for listening and tune in next week. Thanks for stopping by, y'all. If you're inspired by what you've heard today, the best compliment you can give me is to share the Funky Farm Girl with your friends. You can stay connected by following the Funky Farm Girl on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Until we meet again next week, remember to bloom where you're planted.